Hey, welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna to do an oil change on a Honda CRF 110. This is a 2015 model. We just bought this from a friend that used it as a pit bike. So it's got a different exhaust, different intake, carb. It's got these aftermarket handlebars on it as well. So we know it's been ridden a little bit harder. So we're gonna do an oil change first thing on it. And down here is our drain bolt. The first thing we need to do is warm this bike up. We have a cool air system in the shop here. Uh, so we'll get the bike warmed up. We'll let it run for two to three minutes, let the oil get warm. And then we'll pop this drain bolt, and then we'll drain the oil. There we go. There you go, oh. good job. Crack it there. So now that it's loose, you could probably just do it by hand. So I'll take the wrench out of your hand there. Remember, it's kind of warm. And this is a 17 millimeter. We like to use a six point socket when we're doing these. Uh, 12 point, you know, might round the edges, oh. so. Pretty dirty, as I assumed. Yeah, I didn't so think he so did much for oil changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right, let me get you a rag for your hands. Hold yeah. on one second. Everything kind of went so fast. Yeah. So let's check that drain plug. How does okay. it look? Very good. It's all oily now, but. So is that one magnetic? Stick it against like this piece of metal right here. Nope. Okay, so there's not a magnetic drain plug on this. There is, what we're gonna do also in this video is there's one extra step. There's a screen up underneath this case cover and I, I want to change that or I want to check that screen being a 2015 it's got some time on it we might ruin the, the case gaskets so I might not be able to put this back together today but I'd rather know for sure what's going on inside of there so once this is fully drained um, in the meantime we're going to take this kick lever off this is a 10 millimeter here and then I'm not sure that I can get this case cover off without having the um, foot peg bracket out of the way. And the foot peg bracket is just four of these um, 12 millimeter bolts on the bottom here. We'll take off all four of those bolts in the kick lever and that should let us get to this side cover to get to these eight millimeter screws to pull that off without anything in the way, so. And this is splined, so we're kind of, it's a good idea to kind of look at where this kick start starter is before you take it out. That way you're not guessing on where it goes back in. So let's kind of get a visual that it's in like this general position and then try to pull, give that a pull off. And sometimes if it doesn't come off, ours looks like it's coming, you can take a flathead screwdriver and put it in here and kind of widen those splines a little bit to make it easier. It's almost out. Yep. <laughs> to keep wig on it. Perfect. And then the oil is still draining here. So the, what we'll do is uh, we're going to take these four 12 meter bolts out. All right, we're getting the last bolt out here. And all we have to do is he's holding down on the brake lever for me. We're just gonna push straight out that side. And our whole foot peg assembly is down. I think what we'll also do is we're gonna remove the rear brake um, even if we hold it down, I'd like just to get it out of the way. And it's just going to be this cotter pin here. We'll pull this off and we'll, and then you gotta watch out for the spring, but we'll pull that whole assembly off this side. Let's let it hang down. So. All right. So our rear brake is down and off and we'll scotch break this all up. So it's, it's nicer when we put it back together. So that way the brake doesn't get hung up. So what we'll do next is we'll reinstall our drain plug there. We got our drain plug all cleaned up and we'll get it stuck back in here. And we'll torque this and it's 18 foot pounds for the 2015. You need to check with your manual on your bike to make sure it's the same. So we've got our torque set here. Good. So we're torqued there. That's all set. So at this point, if we were just doing a basic oil change, we could just refill it and be done. But I'm really curious with how dirty that screen is inside of here. So that's uh, that's why we've done all this other work. So now we're gonna pull these eight millimeter bolts off that are holding the cover on, and we'll see how easy this cover comes off. So Honda was pretty nice. They gave us all equal length bolts on this. So. I'm always wondering when I take bikes apart, you always want to make sure you put the right bolt back in the right spot. 
but we won't have to worry about that with this cover because all of them are exactly the same. So the next thing we'll do is we're gonna try to pry this cover off of here and we might ruin the gasket if there is one. So let's pull the drain plug back out a little bit. Do you wanna get that out? There's a couple different spots you can use pry bars gently on these cases. You can see this tab here. And then if you go to the back, there's a tab on the bottom. Um, when I say gently, we really don't want to hurt it. So let's just slide this in there. This one's a little bit too long. So let's try the shorter one here. So yeah, we'll set that right there. And this is the little screen that I was curious about, but look at all this like gasket material in there. So um, let's get a pair of like needle nose pliers. Wanna grab those real quick? All right, so let's grab a hold of this screen carefully and you just pull it straight out. Nice, look at that, super clean. So if you're at home and you're wondering, is a 2015 worth cleaning this screen? Probably not. <laughs> it came out really well, but I like to see inside all this stuff anyway. And so um, we'll use some starting fluid and clean that because that dries clean. So now we got our screen all cleaned off and you can see how it's tapered. One end of it's going to be shallower and that they want that to go in toward the case. So if you do take this out to check that, make sure um, you put the smaller side in and then it'll grow as it comes out. So now that that's in, we'll get our gasket cleaned up on both sides and we'll wait for the new one to come in. All right, so we got our new gasket in. We're gonna reinstall this on the case cover here. So uh, the first thing that we did is we cleaned the old gasket material off of here. We just used like a, a drywall knife blade, uh, a new one. So we cleaned that all off of there. And the dowel pins are on the back side here. We've got one dowel pin here and uh, one over here. So what we'll do is we just set this up in here. Get that one to sit there. And then the bottom one's on there nicely as well. And I'll set you guys down here. So pick this up. And this is all cleaned out nice, ready to go back on. So now all we have to do is just kind of recenter this on here. Um, we've got to center this on the gear here and then we've got a couple other little things. This is our, our shaft that comes through for the kicker and then this one here lines up with this uh, little pin here to hold keep that on. So what we'll do next is we'll just carefully get this lined up and try to keep everything in its spots. Just kind of shake it a little bit as you put it on. Sweet. So now that that's back on, what we'll do is we'll put our eight bolts back in that hold that case cover on. Now that we got all the eight millimeter bolts tightened that hold the cover on, we'll put our foot peg bracket on. There's four bolts that hold this up to the bottom here. And so we'll do that next. We've got our foot peg bracket back on, so now we can reattach our rear brake pedal. What I like to do is put a little bit of grease on the peg, so we'll do that. And we gotta get our spring uh, lined up where it catches both here and on there to, to give it the tension to keep it pushed back up. So we'll just put some grease on here just to kind of give it, and we already scotch braided this too, so that way it's kind of crazy how much stuff will actually get in there. So we'll get our spring installed back on here. Get it slid back on. And we'll use a spring tool here in a second to, to pull this spring so it reaches all the way over to here. So our spring is on. Now we'll put our washer back on. And our cotter pin. And at the beginning of the video, we kind of mentioned you want to kind of know where this needs to be. Uh, for us, this is a good spot right there. So the last step is to refill your engine oil. We like to run the Motul oil here at our dealership. After everything's been reinstalled, this is going to be our last step. And then we'll check it on the dipstick. 
the manual calls for in every check your model year, it's one whole liter. So we're gonna put this whole thing right in there. And this is already torqued earlier in the video, so make sure you torque this. If you don't do the whole case cover, all you gotta do is torque that and refill it. So go ahead, Braxton, and we'll fill it up. The mode tool oil is nice because it has the filler spout built right into the bottle. So when you're refilling, it's easy to do. All right, so that wraps up our oil change video on the CRF 110. I would recommend taking the bike back outside, warming it up for two to three minutes, and then rechecking the oil level in your dipstick. I will also throw in the description uh, the right hand case cover gasket that we use. It's an OEM Honda part. And this is, uh, I'm Jared, and this is Braxton from 3Cs. If it helped you, please like and subscribe to our channel. I appreciate it. Thanks.